Well, hi again, everybody. Welcome to my latest video. Well, I never thought it would have happened. I had made this request. I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. But look what I came in the mail. In the black box and everything. Wow. I, I just never thought. It's got a little bit of a weight to it. Not a lot. So let me first, before I do anything else, let me open this up and see what it looks like. Okay, I got my box opening knife ready and everything. Let me open this up. I, I really can't believe this. Uh, it's more than I would have imagined. I made the request. I didn't think it was going to go anywhere. And then here we go. Oh my God. Wow. Wow, it's inside of another box, it looks like. Something's in here. Let me uh, open this up. See what I got. What? What is this? Is some packing material? piece of wood? What? There's a piece of paper here that came in here. What does this say? Dear PE for doers, we sincerely appreciate your interest in our pre-release testing program. As you can imagine, the demand for testing samples of this new video graphics card have exceeded all expectations. Unfortunately, that means we are unable to send actual units to everyone who has made a request. We assure you that our team has reviewed your channel at great depth. However, we have to limit the distribution of test units to those creators who have the widest audience. And unfortunately, your channel did not cross the threshold for receiving an actual unit. We would like you to accept this marketing display replica that you could place in the background of future videos you create. We are sure that would garner additional attention and increased viewer retention time for your videos. Please do not be discouraged by this decision. We would like to continue to hear from you when newer models of our products are announced and released. Sincerely. Well, I guess I have no choice but to at least try what they suggest. I don't think this is going to get me any more views, though. Well, all kidding aside, this video is going to be PC upgrade video. You've seen me build this PC and later upgrade it, correct? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this go to the next level. I purchased a new CPU on eBay, used, but they don't make these anymore anyway. This is one of the higher end CPUs that that motherboard that I had put in there originally can support. It's a third generation Intel i7. What's in there right now is second generation i5. I'm going to put the specs up for the two of them right now on the screen so you can see them. And I'm also going to highlight on this new one what the differences are in terms of additional features and or performance. So as you can see, it's quite a bit different, quite a bit more powerful than what I have in there right now. In addition to that, I'm going to put a new cooler on it. I've always been worried that this particular cooler is, you know, sort of dull. It has, doesn't have any RGB on it. Well, I bought a new cooler that has RGB on it. It's not an expensive one. It, uh, it has RGB that is not controllable, so it won't match up with 
the fans, unfortunately. Now, maybe in the future, I can uh, change that, maybe change this particular one, or sometimes I could make those rotate to be similar to this, if that's something that uh, I want to synchronize for whatever purpose. So that's going to go on with the new CPU. The big change, I think, is I'm going to add a video card now. I actually purchased this brand new GTX 1050 video card, video graphics card. And this is going to go in there, and it's going to turn it into a computer that will have some decent power to it. Even though it's only a 4 gig version of an NVIDIA graphics card, it has good write-ups. And I'll be able to use it not only as an emergency of an emergency type computer for doing video editing. Wouldn't do anything too severe with it. I may have to do it in piecemeal if I'm making a big video. But it should be able to handle it. I mean, that thing does have 16 gig of DDR3 memory in it already. So that's pretty good. It can also be used as a gaming computer. There are a couple of games I'd like to start playing that I've been seeing a lot of others play, including some con content creators on YouTube. And I may bring back some older ones that I used to do. But in any case, I'm going to try to see if I can uh, test this one out more from a gaming perspective once I've completed this upgrade. Also, one other thing I was able to find on eBay is finally I got an I.O. shield that matches that motherboard. So it costs like six bucks to get this. I thought it was going to take a lot longer to arrive, but it arrived pretty quickly because I think it was on a boat from you know where. And that'll just sort of touch it up and give it that little extra level of professional completeness. Finally, I'm going to put a hard drive in it. Now, this is not the exact one that's going to go into this one. This is an extra 500 gig Western Digital Blue hard drive. It's pretty decent. And there is a one terabyte version of this right now sitting in one of my older PCs that I will never use for anything significant anymore. So I'm going to pull that one out of there, use a Cronus to copy over because that's the boot drive on it, over to this one. So this become the new boot drive. At least for now, that may be one that I upgrade to Linux anyway at some point. I haven't decided. But I'll take the one terabyte version of this out, and that will go into this PC as well. So I'll have some decent temporary storage that I can do if I actually do choose to either, you know, store games on it or, you know, do some simplistic video updating. Anyway, with that, these are all the things that are going in there. Uh, let me set up here and show you what I'm going to do. Before I start that though, if you do get something out of this video that you find is helpful in any way, I would appreciate that you at least consider subscribing to my channel. I'll mention that again later. Let's get started with upgrading this PC to something more usable. The first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to take the hard drive that I have in here and replace it. And what I'm going to replace it with is a larger capacity one that I have sitting right now in this PC. Some of you may remember from some of my earlier videos, this is my original daily driver prior to me upgrading to my current uh, fully blown high-end workstation. The drive that's in here is only a 500 gig, the hard drive that is that I use for secondary storage. So that one's going to be replaced with what's in here, which is a one terabyte which I believe is also a faster drive as well. Okay, I have the PC lying down, and I'm going to actually pull that hard drive out first thing. I'm going to, have to pull a lot of the cables out and mess up the, uh, well, not perfect, but a decent amount of cable management that I've done here. Okay, now we can put it back in here. I put the uh, one terabyte drive into the drive cage and I'm going to install it back where this one was. Tuck all this stuff back in here. For now, I will be doing some final cable management later, but for now, that's good enough to put the back on. Okay, here we are. 
The hard drive is now installed. This is the storage hard drive, the hard disk. The drive C will still be the SSD that I originally put in there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer over to the computer screen and I'm going to run the benchmarks on this, at least, you know, most of them. I want to do a before upgrade and I want to do the same benchmarks after. And once I have those results, um, we'll be able to see what the improvement was and I'll chart them at the end of this video. Okay, let's go to the screen. Okay, here's the uh, Windows screen. I am logged in as an administrator. And I'll start off with, uh, I'll start off with Heaven, why not? And see what that looks like. Uh, I think I tried that last time and it, it ran so slow I stopped it, but I don't recall. So I'll just run it again. It is loading, so we'll see. If it's as slow as I recall, I'm just going to speed through this on the video. Well, we completed. Wow, we got a whopping score of a 69. Average FPS of 2.7, minimum 2.1, max 4.7. That is some score. <laughs> okay, let me go on to the next test now. Okay, let's see what we're going to run next here. I guess I'll go with Cinebench R15, just to be consistent. So let's see what Cinebench does here. Okay, it looks like we got a score of 434, which is slightly large, higher than I got the last time I tested this one, which was 431. Didn't change anything, so that's surprising, but there is going to be a certain amount of variance on these tests, right? Let's go to CPU-Z. That has an interesting benchmark to it. Okay, that's the CPU description. As I, you know, what we know it's in there. It's a i5-2400, 310 gigahertz, 95 watt max TDP. Sandy Bridge line. We're putting another Sandy Bridge in there, I believe. No, not really. I'm putting a third generation, not second. Let me go to the benchmark area. I'm not going to pick a reference because I'm referencing it to itself later on with the new CPU. So let me go ahead and do the bench on the CPU. Okay, that's it. We got a single thread score of 333.9 and we got a multi-thread score of 1290.2 okay let's see what we can run next i'll do crystal disk mark but only on drive c just to see if anything is different after i put the new cpu in on i didn't really initialize the other drive so i'll just stick to drive c right now The speed's not at the full speed the SSD drive can support, obviously. But this particular motherboard, as I said in one of my previous videos, it's only 3.0 gigabits per second transfer rate on the SATA. It's got the older version of the SATA. So considering that, you know, that's really as fast as it can get. I'm not going to run Prime95 and Hardware Info. That's a bit too much of a, st a stretch, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead and just go with these performance results for now. I'm not really concerned about the heat at this point. So I think that completes the test that I wanted to, to perform prior to upgrading this PC. Okay, the first thing I'm going to want to put in, the hardest thing, is to get that uh, I.O. shield in. As you recall, I get, I'm putting a new I.O. shield in with this one. So in order to get that in, I'm going to have to pull the motherboard back a little bit. And I'll have to start by removing this USB 3.0 card in order to pull the motherboard. I don't want to disconnect everything. I'm going to see if I can keep it down to a minimum. But I definitely have to take out the I.O. card. Okay. 
it's just connected. Let me get this out of here. So there's the USB 3.0 quadruple port card. In order to do it right, I'm going to have to take that fan out. Okay, fan, you are on your way out. There we go, that did it. Just had to get the right leverage on it. Make sure these fingers aren't bent in any way. Okay, they look pretty good. Let's see if we can get the motherboard back in there now. There we go, I think that's it. I think it's in, I think we got our IO shield in. Let me get the motherboard screws back in. Okay, they're all in. Let me put this IO card back in. And I think everything is hooked up except for the fan. So let me get the fan back in place and secure it. There we go. It spins freely and we're all set. Okay. Now it's time to replace the CPU and the cooler. So let me take this one off first. Just connect the fan. And these guys you gotta turn counterclockwise on an Intel standard one. So let me pull them up. Each side there, each side there. Should come up. Make sure they're all clear. Yeah. There we go. That's a pretty good spread of thermal paste from the last time. A little bit broken up there. Maybe I need to put a little bit more. But one thing I want to point out here is this is going to be replaced by a pretty hefty cooler with a much larger fan. So I think that uh, overall this will cool it, which is something I wanted to do. The fact that I'm putting an i7 in there now. Side, I got to clean off that CPU chip. I've got here some 99% isopropyl alcohol. Get some paper towels. Remember, the high content of alcohol in this makes it dry really fast, which is very good because I don't want any of the components to be affected by that. I'm cleaning it off now before I take it out so I don't get all that stuff all over me. Not sure what I'm going to do with this CPU yet. I might put it on eBay back where I bought with the other one. Not sure if it'll, it'll garner much, but you never know. Somebody could be looking for one of these for some other older PC, right? So I think that's gotten most of it off, right? Throw that away for now. I got the new CPU right here, the i7. You know, it looks like that one's not very clean. I mean, it was used. So I'm gonna have to be careful when I put it in there to make sure I polish it again. But let me get this guy out. You push down on this and then you pull it up and the whole thing should flip right back like that. I got the other one here. I will try not to drop it. And I will open it up and put it right over here on the side. And then I will take this one out here. It's going to have to go with the lettering the same way. And I'm going to pull this one out of here. Whatever you do, do not drop the CPU chip. Those pins in the socket are very delicate. Put that back in here. And I'll just sort of just lay it in there. And then I give it a little bit of a wiggle. Before I close it back up again. Make sure, as you always, get that little lip underneath the screw on an Intel, right? That has to go up underneath there. Push it down. And lock it in place. Now let me clean that one. Okay, so let me clean this one off again, make sure I got it nice and shiny. I use my fingernails a little bit just to get down in between it. Dry it off. And dry one. I think it's all off now. Now to put this new cooler in. Now, this thing does come, this cooler came with some thermal paste, but I have no idea what this is. I can't even read it properly. I wouldn't use it in any case, but I'm going to use one that was recommended to me by Catherine Anna Hauserman, a very dedicated follower of my channel. 
She said, this is the best. I've tried it a couple of times. It works very well. I'm going to stick with it. Okay, I got the motherboard out now. This is definitely the right way to do it in my opinion. Now we can actually see what's going on here. I can actually read what the lettering is here. And it shows different types of sockets. Yep, it shows the middle hole, like I said, in terms of some etchings that are here on the plastic. So that confirms it. But I gotta put this in first. And then I gotta push it through. This way I'll be able to get to the bottom. And um, I need to get these down in the middle hole like that into place there we go those are in that one's in one last one to be in didn't quite go in yet let's just see on the bottom and i gotta push now i can see that i push these things forward more they lock down i can hear them click i didn't hear them click before so i can push down on them so all four of them have clicked Another thing I missed last time is this thing has an actual handle on one side. It doesn't have it on both sides, so I gotta make sure that that handle is the one that I'm trying to push down on. This is the one you put in place first, and then this one you push down on. And then we can take these pins and then lock them in place. Do alternating ones. Now I can actually see the bottom. I think it's critical to getting this to work right. Now I can go to the bottom and see that they all expanded out and locked in place, each one of these little tabs here. Okay. Should be still pretty fresh on the end there. Let me get a nice bead of pea-sized shape on here. Like that. And now I can try to get this guy in here. So this is the one that does not have the handle on it. So I'll get that one in first over on this side. So I had multiple errors going on with this thing. Okay, it's, in, it's locked in place now over there. And then this one here has a handle on it. So when I push this down, this one makes it a little bit easier. There we go. And it's locked in place. I hope that's right. I hope that doesn't get in the way of the card. I don't think it will, but I'll have to be aware of that. Maybe I should test the card now, the video card, to make sure that that's not in the way. It's always good to test things as best you can. Let me go get the video card. Okay, so I have the video card here unopened. It's brand new. This is the, one of the new pieces that I got. Let's open this guy up. Never taken out of here. That's just the motherboard. It's also an Asus. So let's make sure when I put this video card in here, it won't get in the way. Let me take off this little protector here. And if I push this down into here, will it get in the way? No, it won't. No, nope, it looks like it's clear. I won't push it all the way down, but there's plenty of clearance. That's down in between there. Okay, so we're good. As long as I got it out, let me make sure I put the fan in. Now, this doesn't have a separate RGB cable so that it draws the power from the same power that spins the fan. So I just got to route it to the right place. And put it in. That looks like it's right there. There we go. And I'll put a cable tie on here. If you can do this outside before you put the motherboard back in, all the better. Because this is hard to do once it's in place in there. Make sure it doesn't hit the fan and then you're good to go. Okay, let me get it back in the case. I won't bore you with how I do that. Okay, I have it all back together again. Let's see if it boots up. It's got the faster... CPU in it. I didn't put the video card in yet. I'll do that once this has been tested. Let's go. Well, the cooler lights up. Nice rainbow colors. Let's see what we get on the screen here. Hopefully we get something. Oh, I see something. Wow, we're into the desktop. Oh my goodness. 
that's a big step. I'm glad to see that. Let me log in here. And we're in. Let me do a CPU Z real quick to see what the thing looks like. Do we have the, the latest and greatest stuff in it? I did change the processor, I believe. <laughs> so we should see that at least that difference. Okay. Well, now we have the i7-3770, third generation Intel. Well, that's interesting. I'll do a compare to what I saved last time, but that looks like it's got a lower TDP. I thought the other one said higher than that. I'll double check that. It's definitely a, a 22 nanometer rather than, I believe the other one was 32 nanometer. So there's a few differences here. I'll have to outline them up on the screen and show people. Let's see what we got in terms of memory. The memory is faster too. It's now running at the full 1600. I believe it was limited to 1333 before. Remember, you get a double this. So it's running at the full speed that that memory supports. Let's see what the temperatures look like real quick. Well, that thing is really going with all sorts of RGB patterns on it, huh? I want sensors only. Let me run this. Oh, it looks pretty good. It's in the 30s, the low 30s. All cores. Okay. Core one a little bit warmer, but not much. I may do a heat test on this one, even though I didn't do it on the other one. We'll see. But I think we're good for now. So the next step is to actually put the video card in and make sure that that works. So let me shut this guy down yet again. I ran one test and that test was running the Heaven Benchmark, which is the graphics test. I just was curious with the faster processor, whether or not that would make a difference to Heaven. Very interesting results. And I'll put those in the bar graph at the end of this video. Well, with that, now that this is ready to go, I'm going to install now the video card. And we'll see what happens with that once I put that in there. Here it is, and we're going to get this in there. Okay, I'm going to have to take off both of these. I like it when they make it so that it's screw type. I hate when you have the ones you have to twist off. Uh, that's one nice thing about this case, right? And this is going to be two extra I can put in my storage area and save in case there's a case that had the twist off ones and I have a couple of those that suddenly needs one of these that's of the black variety so that's a pretty good thing to have lying around as extra and I got a couple more I've had a couple already but I, this gives me a couple more take the video card it's got a protector on the DVI but not on the other two that's that's unusual let's get this thing in place So it's good to put a little extra light on the subject. There we go. Now I can see the, the thing properly. And now it's down in place. Now this particular one, as I said when I introduced it, it doesn't need a separate PCIe 12 volt power connect supply to it. So I don't need to do that. I could come in here and just screw it down and we should be ready to go. And then what I'll do next is I'll run some tests on it. And I'll make those charts I mentioned before. And we will be done. I just have to put the glass back on and everything's ready to go. Top of I didn't drop the screws, wouldn't it? Well, I didn't have it pushed down all the way. That's a good thing I decided to push it. So now it's, so now it's down locked in place. Without a back plate, I was being a little too careful with that. But now it's locked in place and we can power it up and see what it looks like. Let me switch over to the screen as I power this thing on. Okay, let's see what happens here. I just powered it on. Something's coming out of that video card. I see the window signal. This is actually the really first time I've turned it on since I put the video card in there. And we're in, we're into the desktop. Now I'm gonna have to load drivers for this, I'm sure because the resolution is already low as you can see. I just wanted to make sure it could come up and it did. I am in, but the resolution is off, which is sort of expected. So let me go ahead and load all of the video drivers. I'll go to the Nvidia site, I won't bother everybody on the video watching the video here uh, with that detail it's pretty straightforward and then from that point forward we'll uh, do some testing and the next time you see me it'll be summarizing all of this um, after you see some charts that I'm going to put together 
and uh, we now have a pretty powerful machine in my opinion. And then finally here are the test results starting with the Heaven benchmark both before and after the CPU upgrade. Then followed by the Cinebench test results, which actually showed a very good improvement here, which is what I was expecting by this upgrade. Then the CPU Z benchmarks, which is a new one I've added, and it shows some interesting results, which I also find valuable. I also did the Crystal Disk Mark results. However, it doesn't make much of a difference in this particular case, as you can see. And then in the end, I actually did a heat test. However, this was only done at the end of the upgrade and not compared to the results in the beginning. Well, that completes this upgrade to my backup to the backup PC. What do you think? What did you think of the performance charts? I sort of expected the performance jump when it came to the CPU. I didn't expect such a significant jump with the GPU. Um, obviously this thing had no video card in it before, but when I think about comparison to other video cards, I was surprised at that level of jump. Maybe it's a combination of the CPU and the GPU that made the difference on this one. I also tried running Prime 95, even though I didn't run it before the upgrade, I was a little concerned about that cooler that was in there at the time, the stock Intel cooler. But I decided to run it with this one because it had a little bit more beefy cooler in it. Though it got to 91 degrees after a full Prime 95 test being monitored by Hardware Info, it still was about, what, 14 degrees away from TJ Maxx? So that was not bad. I don't know if I'd want to run it at that heat level at 91 degrees C long term, but obviously in short spurts that would be fine. I don't think that this PC will ever get to that level of performance requirement. Although if I start doing a lot of rendering on it, it might. I doubt I would ever do 4K rendering on it, but you never know. I may have to do short clips like that. And that's only if something happens to my primary here and my backup over there. So I hope you got something out of this video, and if you did, please do me a favor and consider subscribing to my channel. My little head will pop up here in a moment. Click on it and subscribe. That would really be helpful. It will help this channel grow, and I'll be able to do more videos like this. So until the next time, take care, and thanks for watching, really.